Can someone admit that he was wrong? Can redemption come to a hypocrite? Can the masses forgive a fool for his mistakes? Well, I don't know, but something gorgeous happened in these last months. I rediscovered The Witcher 3. The whole idea of why I started replaying this critically acclaimed game was because of the Netflix series. Uh, yes, I am a sucker for the big data format of streaming services content creation. Anything new that Daddy Netflix puts, I must watch, and look, in all fairness, their track record when it comes to adapting video games is pretty amazing, at least for now. And you may say that the show is based on the books and not the game, and you may be right, but come on, Henry Cavill is making these Christian Bale boys that Gerald has in the games. What did you just say? Uh, where were the other drugs going? The truth of this video is an apology to this masterpiece of a game, because the first time I played it, I didn't love it, since I didn't get it. It was my first time playing a Witcher game. It was like arriving to a party where you don't know anyone, and they have all these inside jokes and funny anecdotes, but you're just standing there like... What the f*** is up with this Yu-Gi-Oh sh**? And in all fairness, 2015 was the year of Game of Thrones. Maybe now we have this trend of hating the show because it was a letdown. But back then it was amazing, and it was still adapting the books, so the competition was tight between both fantasy series. So my dumb high school mind was focused on defending my favorite TV show against a game I knew nothing about. Nevertheless, now things have changed, Game of Thrones is out of the picture, and every media article wants to find the next series to fill that spot. And we do have this incomplete part of our lives now that we don't have a TV show that joins us every Sunday, and guess what? The Witcher is not that. And that is not a bad thing, because it's different. Every time there is a new adult kind of edgy program, the news articles compare them to Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad. But that is where the magical adventures of Gerardo del Rio shines. It has this weird puzzle timeline. In the same episode, we have three different stories going at the same time, but they are decades apart from one another. It has action and humor, but in a strange manner where it's more awkward than funny. Which is kind of a pattern in these Netflix adaptations. Also, Jaskier and Gerald's chemistry and relationship are the highlights of the whole first season. All these elements made me want to relieve the third game even more, and I was extremely surprised now that I know who these people are and looked up a little bit of the previous installments on Wikipedia. I can happily say that I understand. Experiencing the Netflix series and the game makes you get the way the story is supposed to be told, at least for me. In the series, some episodes start in the middle of the adventure or after a long period of time since the last time we saw our characters. They are interacting with someone we have never seen, but they kind of know each other and you just have to go with the flow. Some characters will play a larger role in the next adventures to come and others will just play their part and leave. And that is the same way the game is, sometimes you will be doing a main mission and come across someone that opens a secondary quest for you or just dies. At this point, you have a world of adventures to explore with some old faces and new friends to help you or complicate the plot. And that is the core of the game for me, going on adventures, taking different Witcher contracts, discovering new locations and playing Went. There are these weird things that you can do in The Witcher but not in real life. I went to a brothel and talked to the owner and I suppose manager of the girls and asked her if she wanted to play went with me. That is like going up to a pimp and asking him if he's willing to bet his dragon de ojos azules in a Yu-Gi-Oh match. One of my problems in my first playthrough is that I think Geralt is a Martis too. You know, good looking, can kick your ass with a, his fingernail, an expert in the art of seduction, ripped as f bro, heart of gold but he's misunderstood by society, an outcast, a lone wolf in this horrible fantasy world. And I still hold that opinion, but not as strongly, because fucking Jon Snow has the exact same problem. A handsome dude that can do no wrong, but the other kids in his class hate him and make him aside. The main issue with Game of Thrones is that at the end Jon Snow does his hero journey and that's it. He goes from point A to point B, then to C and back to A. He has some changes, but he's a dull character, and pretty dumb while taking decisions, but that is a video for another time. 
Geralt, on the other hand, has similar flaws, but now you're the one making the dumb decisions, making the player the Martis too. And this might be a teaser for another video, but Geralt isn't a blank slate like Bella from Twilight or Juanito Nieve. Sometimes Geralt can laugh and make jokes or mistakes because he might be perfect, but he's still a dairy smelly mutant. Now that every game is a sandbox RPG, The Witcher 3 makes a turn in creating a whole world of things to do, where other sandbox titles focus on clearing an area and make you grind for some stupid reasons. Looking at you, Ascrid, The Witcher makes it more organic, filling the world with stories and different callbacks to other fantasy fairy tales. Like this time while exploring, I came to a village that feared the gang of Little Red. When I fought the gang, Little Red turned into a werewolf, and that is really funny. Maybe Trick or Treat did it first, but that attention to detail makes the world feel alive and full of adventures, straight out of a Saturday morning cartoon. Another topic is racism and class division. When you are in the high society, all fancy, and talking to kings and real pieces of shits, they might throw a racist comment or treat others like trash, especially the elves. Everyone really fucking hates elves in this game. But to contrast the social structure, when you are exploring the countryside and experiencing the consequences of war, the village people are miserable and have money issues, family problems, and a fucking monster just killed their kids. Then you average NPC, like the equivalent of two pesos, and they thank you as if you just fixed all their problems with a little of in game currency making the contrast extremely clear for a dumbass baby who just wants a fantasy story, like me. Anyway, immersion is the main objective when we play a game. We want to feel like Batman. <laughs> but more than that is the adventures we have with the ones that surround us and the ones we love. Friends, girlfriends, father figures and family are the glue of our journey called life. At the end, this game didn't make me feel like a witcher. It can be kind of broken sometimes. But it showed me that these characters care for each other and love one another, even with their flaws and all. Making me feel like I have a purpose in life. <laughs>